With the release of Operation Deadly Omen, the meta has shifted drastically. This is due to all the changes related to attachments, operator balancing, and much, much more. With the meta being shifted so drastically, today I decided to rank every attacker on a tier list, ranging from S to D tier. So go ahead and grab you some snacks because this is going to be a long one. Okay, now before I go in and start placing operators on this tier list, I first wanna go over what each tier on the list actually means. For operators that I'll be placing in S tier, generally those are gonna be operators that I consider to be borderline overpowered or at the very least stronger than all the other operators in A tier. And then for the operators in A tier, those are gonna be operators that I think are good in every single round, no matter what. So every bomb site, every map, if you pick that operator, they will be useful. And then B tier is just an operator that I think is a solid pick and can be extremely useful depending on the bomb site, but they're not useful all the time. And then C tier is kind of a niche operator where they're only useful in very specific situations, but they are still useful in those niche situations. And then D tier is operators that I think are so bad they need a rework either because their gadgets flawed or some other reason. Now, obviously, since we're going in alphabetical order, Ace is going to be the first operator I'll be discussing in this video. And in my opinion, Ace deserves S tier. The reason for this is because of his Selma charges being so good at getting walls open. He is by far the best operator in the game for getting a reinforced wall open. And then on top of that, he has the AK-12, one of the strongest ARs in the game, which can allow him to actually frag on top of being a really good operator for getting walls open. Ace, when compared to other hard breachers like Habana or Thermite, is just way more versatile and he has a way better loadout. Now, after Ace, we have Amaru. And in my opinion, Amaru is a C tier at best. I don't think Amaru is bad enough to warrant being put into the need rework category, but due to her gadget only being useful for occasionally rushing up a hatch or occasionally rushing up a window, I don't really think she's that useful in most situations. Not to mention that the LMG rework that just recently released has kind of nerfed Amaru because she's not able to rush nearly as easily with a good weapon. Then, so for me, I'm gonna be putting Amaru in the bottom of C tier. And moving past Amaru, we have Ash, and Ash is an easy A tier. Ash's breaching rounds are extremely useful for dealing with utility on the defense. Her guns are really strong as well. The R4C, one of the best guns in the game, and now it has an ACOG with really good attachments. And then the G36C has always been a fan favorite weapon. And then on top of it all, she's a three which allows her to be a pretty good fragger. And so for me, due to how easy she is to use, how much utility you can get out of her, and just how well she is at being a fragger, I think she deserves A tier. Then after Ash, we have Blackbeard, which is obviously a easy need rework. He is in desperate need of a rework, not only because he's just super weak, but also because his gadget just fundamentally does not work in Rainbow Six Siege. Having an operator that can bypass the one-shot headshot mechanic is just a dumb idea in general. And so they need to rework him immediately so that way his gadget can actually fit into the the whole of siege not to mention his weapons are just really terrible and i feel like his weapons are terrible because of the way his gadget works and so all of that combined kind of makes me want blackbeard to get reworked as quickly as possible then after blackbeard we have blitz which is niche at best blitz is arguably worse than monty and for a couple of reasons one he heavily relies on rush strategies, which to me is just not nearly as useful for a shield operator. And then on top of that, because of his shield not being able to extend like Monty's, he's super vulnerable to explosives or any other common shield counter. And so overall, I'd rather pick Monty in like 90% of the situations that I find myself picking a shield. And for that reason, Blitz has to go in C tier. Then after Blitz, we have Brava and Brava is another niche operator at best, in my opinion. Brava's drones can be useful depending on what operators the enemy team is bringing. If they're bringing in a Rooney or a Maestro or something like that, her gadget can be useful for hacking those pieces of utility. But if the defenders are not bringing any forms of electronic utility, or if their electronic utility isn't positioned in a way that's beneficial to your team, then Brava is basically useless and her drones provide no real utility. And while her guns may be decent, her gadget is just too niche to warrant putting her any higher than C tier. Then after Brava, we have Buck, and I think Buck is going to be the second operator to make it into the S tier category. The reason why I say that is because Buck is by far the best vertical play operator in the game right now. His weapon is really strong. He has access to a Gon 6 and flashbangs. His shotgun is extremely useful for, like I said, playing vertically. And the reason for that is because he can make vert holes from range, similar to what Ram can do. However, he doesn't have to open up an entire floor like Ram does to get utility out of his gadget. He can just open small individual holes that he plans on peeking through, which to me is a lot more convenient. And then also having that shotgun can be useful 
useful for gunfights as well. If he finds himself going up a staircase or something, he can use that shotgun to pick up some free frags. And so because of that, Buck is definitely worthy of the S tier position. Then after Buck, we have our first B tier operator, Capital. And I think Capital does deserve this position. I used to think Capital was a lot better than he is. But for me personally, after climbing the ranks a little bit more, I realized that Capital isn't nearly as useful as I originally thought, but he's still a very useful operator. His weapons are extremely strong. He has access to the Gon 6 and secondary hard breach charges, which is pretty big secondary utilities in my opinion. And then his fire bolts and smoke bolts can be really useful for a site execute. However, he's not useful on every bomb site, which is why I'm not gonna be putting him in ARS tier. He can be useful on a lot of them, but picking him every round will not end up with you getting a lot of utility. Moving past Capital, we have Deimos, which I'm going to be putting in the A tier next to Ash. Deimos obviously is the new operator, so we don't know how well he's going to perform in ranked or professional play. But from my experience on the test server, I do think he's going to be a very useful operator. The reasons for this is because he can literally just get intel for free. He doesn't have to do anything except ping a defender early in the round, and then he can just at will decide to scan that defender and get a live location of where they are. Now, compared to his competitors like Lion or Jackal, Deimos does have the downside of A, revealing his own position, and B, his pings only being visible to him and not his team. But I do think those downsides are made up for by the fact that Deimos can literally just ping one defender at will whenever he wants. You can use his gadget to force defenders into terrible positions, and you can also use them to clear out roamers or any other situation that you'd find yourself using Jackal or Lion. You're just going to have to be better at communicating to your team where they are based on those pings. Moving past Deimos, we have Dokubi, which is going to be another S tier operator, probably at the top of S tier. The reason for this is because Dokubi can call the defenders, forcing them off of their cameras. She can hack into their camera system, getting access to all of their cams. And she has a pretty easy to use DMR. I mean, it can be difficult for new players to use her loadout, but generally for someone in the champ to platinum elo they're gonna have a pretty easy job using her loadout and on top of that her secondary gadgets are really strong when it comes to flashbangs smoke grenades and her emps as well so overall she just has a really good well-rounded kit and her gadget is arguably overpowered and i honestly would like to see it nerfed at some point but ubisoft has committed to giving her a rework later in year nine so let's just hope that that uh pans out well moving past deimos we have finca and i'm going to be putting finca in the middle of C tier. The reason why Finca to me is a C tier operator is because her gadget is really terrible. It's not that good. I mean, being able to get heals on the fly can be somewhat decent and being able to revive any teammate from across the map can also be decent, but the situations where you're gonna find yourself needing that ability are gonna be few and far between. And most of the time you're gonna be better off picking a different operator. Uh, and so because of that, I don't think she can go anything higher than the C tier category. Now moving past Finca, we have Flores, which I'm going to be putting in the B tier, probably top of B tier. I don't think Flores is an operator that is good every round because I do think he is somewhat dependent on what the defenders bring in their kit. If the defenders bring a lot of bulletproof utility, Flores will be an extremely useful operator. But if they don't have a lot of bulletproof utility, similar to Brava, he's not going to be as useful. However, Flores is more consistently useful than Brava, which is why I think he deserves to be bumped up a tier. And then on top of that, the actual utility that you get out of his gadget most of the time is stronger than what Brava gets. His loadout is a little bit weaker than Brava because he doesn't have smoke grenades, a secondary shotgun, and his gun is a little bit weaker. But generally, I think Flores is a stronger pick than Brava in like 90% of situations, which is why I think he deserves to be in B tier. Some people may disagree with me on that because a lot of people will probably consider Brava to be a better operator. But for me personally, I think Brava is just not that good. Moving past Brava, we have Fuse and Fuse is going to be another operator that's gonna join the rest of the C tier operators in the niche category. And the reason why I say that is because once again, Fuse is mainly useful on vertical play bomb sites, which if the enemy team is not running a bomb site with vertical play available from above, then Fuse is gonna be utterly useless for the most part. And then on top of that, his cluster charges at higher ranks will very rarely get you kills and they'll only end up clearing bits of utility inside the bomb site, which can be decent, but depending on the defender site setup and what operators they're bringing, you may not get any utility out of him at all, which is why I don't think he can warrant being put anything higher than C tier. Now after Fuse, we have Glass, and Glass is honestly an operator that's been growing on me a lot recently. And so for that reason, I'm gonna be putting him at the bottom of B tier. I don't think Glass is a extremely useful operator, but I do think he can be a solid pick on most bomb sites. And the reason for that is because the fact that he has smoke grenades, 
frag grenades, a GON-6, his DMR is really strong. And then he also can bring a secondary SMG if he would like to. And due to that, Glass can actually be a really good support operator for helping your team get down a plant. Now, if the enemy team is picking Warden, which is arguably the strongest counter to Glass, then he becomes basically useless, which is why I don't have him any higher than the B tier category. If Warden didn't exist, Glass would likely be a lot higher on this list. But since Warden is a very commonly picked operator and he also just completely destroys Glaz in like 90% of situations, I do think Glaz deserves B tier. Okay, now the next operator on our list is going to be Gridlock, and she is also going to be joining Glass in the B tier category. I think Gridlock overall is a very useful operator and she brings a lot of utility. However, she's not going to be useful on every round because depending on how heavy the defenders are roaming and also depending on what map you're playing, flank watch may not be as necessary as another operator would be. A lot of times you can get away with just using a drone on flank watch, which is why I'm not going to be putting gridlock anything higher than B, but her utility for a flank watch operator is extremely good. She has smoke grenades. She has EMP impact. She has a secondary shotgun. Her weapons are really useful. And then she gets four track singers, which can be used to cover the sound of a plant, cover the flank, or just crowd control the defense and kind of force them to stop being super aggressive onto your team. However, like I said, since she can't be useful in every round, she can't obviously go into A tier or S tier. Now moving past Gridlock, we have an operator that used to be really weak, but is now actually pretty strong, uh, Grim. Grim for me is going to be going in the top of B tier. Grim has gotten a lot better after the recent reworks to him. His gadget can be extremely useful for crowd controlling defenders or to cover a plant or to just force defenders into a sticky situation. Since his bees live ping for so long and the area of the bees is so much wider, you can actually cut off massive rotations from the defenders by just bringing Grim and shooting some bees in an area. One of my favorite bomb sites to use Grim on is basement on layer. When you're attacking that bomb site, you can go through warehouse and then cut off the missile hallway uh, with Grim and basically shut off the defenders from swinging you. And you can also get aggressive off that intel that you're getting off those bees as well. There are plenty more examples of when Grim can be useful. However, he's not useful on every bomb site and he's not useful in every situation, which is why I'm not gonna be putting him in A tier because you have to be running a very specific strategy or you have to attack in a very specific way to get a lot of utility out of Grim. Now the next operator is Habana. And for me, Habana is going to be going in the B tier. Habana is arguably the most niche hard breacher because of the fact that she's only really useful for getting hatches. She can get walls open, but because of the fact that Ace and Thermite just dominate in that category, you're never gonna find yourself picking an Habana to get a wall open. And so for that reason, B tier I think is the most suitable position for her. Unlike Habana, I think Iana, our next operator, is deserving of the S tier ranking. The reason for this is because she is useful in literally every round and she's arguably one of the best operators in the game. The reason for this is because Iana is useful in every round and she's arguably one of the best attackers in the game. And that is because of the fact that she has infinite drones at her disposal. She has two really solid weapons. She has a Gon 6 and flashbangs. So with all of that combined, she's just a really good overall pack package for a fragging role. And on top of that, she can help to deal with some utility similar to Asher Zofia. Now moving past Siana, we have IQ and IQ is unsurprisingly going to be going in the C tier. The reason why IQ is such a niche operator is because she's only useful for getting rid of electronic utility, which once again, if the defenders don't bring electronics utility, then her gadget's literally useless. And also in the situations where her gadget is useful, uh, you could probably get away with bringing another operator instead. IQ does have frag grenades now, which does help her, but generally her gadget's only gonna be useful for going below to clear things out like Valkyrie cameras or to help you deal with a Solace. That's another useful situation for IQ, but those situations are so few and far between. And so for me, I don't think IQ deserves anything higher than C tier. She does have good guns and she is a three speed, which can make her a decent fragger, but that's about all that she has at her disposal. Next up is Jackal. And for me, Jackal is going to be an easy A tier operator. Jackal, just like Deimos, has access to really good weapons. He has a secondary shotgun, unlike Deimos, which allows him to, uh, you know, open vertical holes or to get uh, holes in a wall or anything else that your team might need to breach soft destruction wise. And then on top of that, he has smoke grenades at his disposal, which, which can be useful for covering a plant. And then on top of all of that, 
he has his goggles, which can be useful for getting free intel uh, by checking a room really quickly for any footprints. And if there's footprints in the room, you know that there's a fender there. And if there's no footprints in the room, then you know the fenders aren't in that room, which can allow him to face check rooms really easily. And then on top of that, his ability to ping defenders footprints can be useful for roam clearing and all of those other situations, which is why he's banned so often as well. A lot of people find him to be super annoying to deal with because of that pinging capability and just the free intel he provides. All of that wraps him up to be one of the best operators in the game. So he's deserving of A tier. Then after Jackal, we have Kali, and I am going to be putting Kali in the need rework tier. I know this might be a controversial placement, but because of the fact that Kali's stuck on a sniper rifle, her gadget isn't really that useful when you can just bring an Ash or a Zofia and do a very similar job. Also, the fact that she basically has to rely on an SMG as a primary option because her primary is obviously a sniper rifle. I just personally don't find myself ever picking Callie. Callie is a very niche pick. And even when she is useful, a lot of times another operator would just be more useful. For, and so because of that, I think Ubisoft needs to go back to the drawing board and either give Callie a different primary option or change the way her gadget works or something. So that way Callie can actually be a useful operator in ranked. Now after Callie, we have Lion, which is also going to be going in the A tier. And I'm sure you're seeing a pattern here. What all of these operators have in common is being able to get free Intel and Lion can do that on a whole new level because now Lion can force all the defenders to just stand still. And if they don't stand still, they're gonna be getting pinged. So the reason why that's so useful is because Lion in conjunction with a drone can allow you to find the location of a defender, pop an E1D, and then that defender will be forced to either stay in that position or run away and reveal the fact that they're running away by getting pinged by Lion's E1Ds. This combined with Lion having access to the V308 AR or the 417 DMR and frag grenades just makes him an overall well-rounded operator that in my opinion is well worthy of the A tier. Now after Lion, we have Maverick, which is going to be the only hard breacher in this video to hit C tier. And the reason why I say that is because Maverick is just very, very rarely useful for the attacking team. The reason why a lot of people like Maverick and the reason why Maverick was useful at one time is because of the fact that he can just bypass any sort of hard wall utility such as Cade or anything else. And he can also bypass Tuberau now with the release of Tuberau. But the problem with Maverick is that he takes so long to get the wall open. He can bypass those pieces of utility, which is strong, don't get me wrong, but having to spend such a long time on a wall to get it open and then on top of that having to waste a piece of soft utility to get the wall open after maverick makes the holes in the wall makes maverick a very hard operator to use and to get a lot of utility out of because by the time he gets the wall open it's going to be really late in the round and because of the way our current siege meta it works time is money and if you're running maverick you're not going to be able to apply pressure on the site fast enough to be able to get a plant down in most situations now, Maverick can be useful on maps like Clubhouse to get dirt open or to also open hatches that have been catered off and stuff like that. But obviously, that's why he's not in D tier because he can be useful, but it's just those situations are so few and far between. Moving past Maverick, we have Monty, and I'm going to be putting Monty in the B tier. I know some people might question this selection, but for me, as someone who plays Monty a lot and that has my team incorporate Monty into a lot of lineups, I personally find myself really enjoying Monty and considering him a really solid option. The reason why I think Monty is worthy of this tier is because he is extremely useful at forcing himself and his team into a position. A lot of defenders are not experienced at dealing with a Monty. And a lot of the time, a Monty's mere presence will just cause the defenders to panic and, and either A, try to force aggression onto Monty, or they'll just start giving up positions to Monty. Now, obviously there are going to be teams that know how to deal with a Monty and that will, uh, be a decent challenge, but even against those teams, Monty can be useful for taking power positions. For example, one of my favorite places to pick Monty on is Catwalk on Clubhouse. You can walk up the Catwalk stairs, and by you going up the Catwalk, you're forcing all the defenders to either run away or to risk being shot by your teammates or you. And if you play it right, this can be a really effective way to get control of Catwalk, which is a really important position when you're attacking CCTV. Now there's many more examples of Monty being extremely useful for pushing power positions, like Elbow on Oregon is a really strong example as well. But because of the fact that he's not useful on every bomb site and every map, I can't put him any higher than B tier, but I do think he's a really solid option if you know how to play him and if your teammates know how to play with him as well. Now after Monty, we have Nook, and Nook after the recent nerf to her gadget is going to be going in the C tier. Nook no longer having quieter footsteps makes her very niche. The only way you're going to be able to get a lot of utility out of Nook is if either A, the uh, defenders have a lot of cameras and they're not putting a lot of bodies on positions, or 
if B, the enemy team just isn't very coordinated. The reason why I say this is because Nook's entire gadget revolves around being able to counter Intel. And so if the enemy team isn't running any cameras, then gadgets, then Nook's gadget is literally useless. And when you pick Nook, you're forced on an SMG on the attack, which already is putting you in a disadvantage. And so to me, in a lot of situations where you find yourself wanting to lead towards picking a Nook, you'd probably be better off picking an Ash or an Iana because you'll be giving more utility to your team. And on top of that, you wouldn't be banking on the defense not putting enough bodies on a certain position or relying on cameras too much. If the if the enemy team is not hugely reliant on cameras, then Nook is not going to be that useful. And I hate to tell you, in most ranked games these days, a lot of the times the defenders are not paying super close attention to their cameras. So you can actually just sneak by cameras a lot of the times without even needing a Nook. Now, moving past Nook, we have Nomad, and Nomad is really close to falling into the niche tier for me, but she does have some redeeming qualities. The first of which is the fact that she can be extremely useful for dealing with a very aggressive team that likes to run out a lot, which happens in a lot of ranked games these days. And then on top of that, she can be useful for holding a flank down. However, compared to Gridlock, she's not nearly as useful, which is why she's at the bottom of B tier and not anywhere higher. Now, after Nomad, we have Osa, and Osa is going to be going in the top of B tier for me. The reason why I say Osa is deserving of the B tier is because her shields, similar to Monty, can be extremely useful for forcing defenders into giving up positions. And on top of that, her weapons are really solid. She's the only shield operator in the game that also has access to a primary AR, which is really unique. And her also having access to EMPs can make her a really solid choice to go along with an Ace or a Thermite. The main situations where Osa is useful is sitting outside of a breach once Ace gets the wall open or sitting on a super strong power position like Blue on Oregon or something like that. Those are going to be the situations where Osa is useful. However, when you're on a bomb site that either doesn't have a lot of outside walls or doesn't have a super significant funnel point, then Osa is not going to be nearly as useful as another operator on this list. And so because of that, I'm going to be putting her in the B tier. I don't think she's worthy of anything higher than that, but in the situations where she is useful, but in the situations I've mentioned, she is really useful, which is why I think she's worthy of B. Now moving past Osa, we have Ram, which I'm also going to be putting in the B tier. A lot of people like picking Ram right now, mainly in my opinion, for the R4C. And don't get me wrong, the R4C is a really strong weapon and it is tempting to pick Ram over someone like Buck or Sledge. But to me, I think in most situations, Buck and Sledge are just gonna offer you more. A lot of people will say, well, why do you think that is? Because Ram can get more walls open. She can get them open faster technically. And she can also do that safer because she's not the one actually making the holes. Ram's drones are the ones making the holes. And while I do agree with that, the massive amount of holes that one drone makes is most of the time a disadvantage to you than an advantage because it allows the defenders to swing off those large amount of holes and it leaves you heavily vulnerable. With Buck or Sledge, you can just open up small holes on specific positions that you want to cut off. But with Ram, a lot of the times you end up just opening the entire bomb site floor on accident, which can end up being a detriment to you in the long run. Now you can mediate that by just shooting the canister on the back of her clutch drones and stopping them before they open too big of a hole. But then at that point, why are you picking Ram? You should probably be picking Sledge or Buck because they'd end up doing the same thing, but they'd be able to make more holes as well. Now, I think we all know where Sins is going to be going on this tier list. Sins is going to be going into the D tier, and I don't really think I need to spend much time discussing why that is. But the TLDR is that Sins' gadget just isn't very good. It's basically just smoke grenades, but worse. And then on top of that, their loadout just really isn't that good. The POF-9 is arguably one of the worst ARs in the game. And then the 417 is decent, but being forced on the 417 on top of having a terrible gadget just isn't a good mix. Sins does have decent secondary gadget options, but it doesn't make up for the fact that their weapons are terrible and that their gadget is terrible. So because of all of that, D tier is the best I can do for Sins. Moving past Sins, we have Sledge, and Sledge is going to be going in the A tier for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Compared to Buck, I consider Sledge to be slightly worse because he has to actually go up to the holes and make them right up close, whereas Buck can do it from somewhat of a range. And then on top of that, Sledge doesn't have access to the underbarrel shotgun, and having an underbarrel shotgun in your weapon loadout is pretty strong. And Sledge is a three armor, which makes it harder for him to run away from nitro cells. So because of all of that, I think Buck is slightly better, but they are somewhat comparable. And I could see some people putting Sledge in S because they might think that his frag grenades are really useful. And I would agree they are really useful, but I think Buck slightly edges this out, which is why I'm going to be putting Sledge in the A tier. Moving past Sledge, we have Thatcher and Thatcher is going to be going in the A tier for me. I know for a long time, Thatcher was an S tier operator and that may seem surprising to a lot of you who haven't been playing Siege for a very long time. But if you hear me out, you'll understand why. 
the reason why Thatcher has fallen from an S tier to an A tier, at least in my eyes, is because of the fact that secondary EMPs exist, which kind of does his job. And with so many operators in the game right now that can do Thatcher's job, I just don't see myself needing to pick Thatcher specifically for that role because all Thatcher brings to your team is literally just EMPs. They may be stronger than impact EMPs and they may be extremely useful for other situations other than just getting a wall open. But to me, because of the fact that Thatcher doesn't bring any secondary utility at all, and all he brings is EMPs, he can't go into the S tier. He isn't amazing, but he is good every round. And his guns are solid as well, which does help him in this position. But when you take into account operators like Dokubi have their primary gadget, their really strong loadout, and then on top of that, having access to secondary EMPs, I just think it's a no brainer to have Thatcher somewhat lower on this list. Now, the next operator on this list is Thermite, and Thermite is going to be going in B tier right alongside Habana. And the reasons for that is the same exact reasons that Habana is in B tier. Thermite is only useful for getting outside walls open. And the reason for that is because trying to get inside walls open with Thermite is difficult because a lot of times you'll just get swung on when you're trying to place your uh, charge on the wall. And since you have to actually walk up and place a charge on the wall, you can get Nitro from below and other things like that. Ace cannot be dealt with as easily because he can throw his Ace charges from a range. So Ace is not going to be killed as easily when getting a wall open. Then on top of that, Ace just has better guns than Thermite, which also hurts Thermite in his versatility. But what does help Thermite a little bit is the fact that he has better secondary gadgets than Ace. He has access to flashbangs and smoke grenades, at least at the time of recording. And so because of that, I do think Thermite is worthy of the B tier category, but Ace does kind of phase him out in most situations. So because of that, he can't really go any higher than the B tier. Now, after Thermite, we have Twitch, which Twitch to me is going to be going in the B tier as well. The reason for this is because Twitch can be a solid pick on a lot of bomb sites because of the fact that her drones counters any form of electronic utility. But just like in Bravis case, if the enemy team isn't bringing a lot of electronic utility, then your gadget is pretty much useless. But I do think that Twitch's drones, when they are useful and when the defenders are bringing electronic utility, I do think her drones are better than Brava's. The reason why I say that is because Brava's drones are louder. They take longer to get rid of utility compared to Twitch and Twitch gets more charges with each drone compared to Brava. And so all of that lends in favor to Twitch. Now, Brava does have some advantages over Twitch, which is the fact that she has a secondary shotgun and the fact that her primary weapons, I would argue, are better than Twitch's. But even considering the fact that Twitch is a lot of the time forced onto the 417, I do still think Twitch is a better operator. The situations where Brava are strong are just way too few in comparison to the situations where Twitch is strong. Now moving past Twitch, we have Ying, arguably one of the strongest operators in the game right now. And that is why I'm gonna be putting her in the S tier. The reason why Ying is so strong is because her Candelas are extremely useful for forcing defenders out of an area or for just picking up free frags. This combined with the fact that she has a pretty strong LMG, which may be getting reworked in the new update, but I still think her LMG is really strong. And then on top of that, she has smoke grenades, which can help her team go for a plant. Ying is extremely strong in two situations. The first being a situation where you need to clear a defender out of a position, and the second being in the post plant. Both of these situations come up in almost every round, and you're gonna find yourself getting a lot of utility out of Ying if you start picking her in your lineups. Now moving past Ying, we have Zero, and Zero to me is going to be going in the top of C tier. Zero has a lot of flaws, which I've discussed numerous times in the past, and a lot of people will disagree with me on this point. This is Zero has been an operator that I've held the line on for a very long time as being a very niche operator, and a lot of content creators will disagree with me on this point, but I still hold my ground on the fact that I think Zero isn't as good as a lot of people make him out to be. Zero does have really strong weapons, the MP7 with an ACOG and the SC3000 are two of the strongest weapons in the game. Don't get me wrong. They're really good. And then his secondary utility is really strong as well, having hard breach gadgets. And uh, I believe he has a GON6, if I'm not wrong. Um, having those pieces of utility is extremely strong. And having that loadout makes him one of the strongest fraggers in the game. But his gadget is where he's held back. And the reason why I say his gadget isn't that good is because of the fact that Cameras on attack are not nearly as useful as cameras on the defense, especially stationary ones. The attackers a lot of the time are pushing the defenders back, and so they're not staying in the same area for very long. And so having a stationary camera is only going to be useful in situations where you need to hold a flank, or if you can somehow manage to get them into the bomb site or in some position that the defenders are holding down very heavily. 
However, as I've mentioned in the past on multiple occasions, it's very hard to get a zero cam into a position where the defenders are playing. If you're trying to get them into the bomb site or something, they make such a loud noise and their light is so bright. It's very easy for them to get spotted and shot before you're ever even able to ping anyone on the camera as well. And so in my experience bringing Zero on the roster, he's mainly strong in situations where you need to watch a flank, but I would argue that Gridlock and Nomad are gonna bring you more utility in those situations. And because of that, I do think Zero deserves to be in C tier compared to those operators. Now for the final operator of the video, we have Zofia, and I think Zofia is another operator that's going to belong in the A tier. I'll put her slightly above Ash. The reason for this is because Zofia's gadget is literally just Ash, but better because she has two additional stuns on top of having two impact grenades. So she basically gets two pieces of burn on top of having two pieces of soft destruction compared to Ash only having two pieces of soft destruction. But she has the same secondary gadgets as Ash, and her guns are honestly comparable to Ash. And so because of that, they're in a very similar position. The only major difference is that Ash is a three speed and Sophia is a three armor, but that's not really significant enough to cause them to be shifted that highly in the tier list. So to me, Sophia is basically just Ash, but slightly better. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, I make Seize content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't miss the next upload. Also, I recently started a variety channel where I'll be posting content outside of Siege, so if you're interested, I'll have a link in the description for you to go check it out. Now, if you wanna watch another video just like this one, it'll be popping up on your screen right now. Also, if you wanna watch a video from my variety channel that I just mentioned, a video from that channel will be popping up on your screen now as well. Hopefully you all found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.